Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutech. Today, we'll be talking about the best $1,000 streaming and gaming PC. Okay, so let's get things started by opening up our Intel 10400 box and taking the processor out of its cardboard casing. Now we won't be needing the stock cooler for this build since we have an AIO. And here's the Intel 10400 itself. Then prepare your motherboard for the CPU installation by lifting the lever for the CPU socket. Very, very slowly and carefully remove your Intel 10400 from its plastic casing. You don't want it to jump out at you and hold it by the sides and find the triangle on the bottom left of the processor and match it up with the triangle on the motherboard. That way you'll put the CPU in the socket the right way. I know for a lot of people this is the scariest step. I promise putting the CPU in its socket is very easy as long as you just do it slowly and carefully. I promise you ain't gonna mess it up if you're just very slow and cautious. And now let's install our primary storage device which is our M.2 SSD from Team Group. Insert it into the M.2 slot and secure it in place using the very small M.2 screw. You'll definitely need a smaller screwdriver for this one. And once that's finished, it's time to install our ballistics RAM. So you want to ensure that you install the RAM in the proper DIMM slots. This can be found in the motherboard instructions as well as on top of the actual motherboard as you can see right there actually. So make sure that you put the RAM in the correct RAM slots. Now to ensure that you install the RAM without any problems, what I recommend for you guys to do is to use both your thumbs on the sides of the RAM stick push down until you hear a click and now we can finally install our motherboard so first secure the IO shield into the back of the case all you got to do is apply even pressure on all the sides and it'll snap into place and then slowly place your motherboard into the case you're going to want to use the IO shield as a guide you want to make sure that the rear IO aligns with the IO shield to fasten the motherboard in place, you're going to want to use the 632 screw flats. These screws should be included with your NZXT case. And now let's get started with installing the case fans. So first up, you want to remove the front bracket by removing the two thumb screws on the top and bottom. So for this build, we're using the up here repack of RGB 120 millimeter fans. And to secure them in place, all you need to do is use the included screws that come with the up here fans and secure the fans in place, all four corners on both 120 millimeter fans. And this is how it should look when it's done. Make sure that the fans are facing the right direction. Otherwise you'll have improper airflow. So make sure that the up here logo are facing the inside of the case as you can see right here and just a quick side note you don't need to use these particular fans you can use any 120 millimeter fans you'd like and next up the power supply so I'm not doing the power supply first with this build because I was not building the PC while staying on top of a carpet now if you are building a PC standing on top of a carpet I do highly recommend that you plug in the power supply first but yeah you install the power supply by using the four included screws and once that's completed we can move on to plugging in the power cable so let's start with the 24 pin connector now this specific one is kind of tough to plug in you need to put a good bit of force and it requires a lot of patience but just keep going at it and it will eventually snap into place and if we take a look at the back you can see that nzxt provides an area for you to route the 24 pin connector and now for the cpu power cable route it through the case's upper slot and then you can go ahead and connect your cpu power connector now this one isn't nearly as tough as the 24 pin power connector but you will still need to use a good bit of force so make sure that it just snaps in place and you'll be all set Next up, the USB 3 connector. Now this one comes from the front of your case, not from the power supply. This one's real easy. It only goes in one way. You just push it in and it's a done deal. Following that, we have the front panel connector. Now make sure you plug this in in the right spot. Otherwise your PC will not boot up. This is really important. Make sure it's installed in the right section. And after that, we have the HD audio connector. This one goes on the very bottom left of the motherboard, plugs right on in, only goes in one way. Now we're ready to install our AIO CPU cooler. To locate the CPU bracket, the four screw mounts and the four securing screws, place the screw mount in its little slot at the bottom of the bracket and then screw it in place. Do this on all four corners and make sure you're doing it in the Intel screw holes. Then install it onto the motherboard by placing it through the back and fasten it using the four plastic spacers. 
And now that everything on the motherboard is prepared, let's get the fan system set up. All you need to do is locate your four super long screws and screw the fan into the heatsink. Now NZXT does include pre-applied thermal paste, which is perfectly fine, but I went ahead and removed it because I want to use my own, which is why I'm installing the fan first. But if you decide to keep the thermal paste that NZXT pre-applied, I highly recommend that you do not install the radiator first and install the pump first instead. But anyway, moving on to install the radiator, all you really need to do is screw it in place using the four screws included with the M22, and then it's pretty much installed. As for the cables, you're going to want to plug the CPU fan cable into the header labeled CPU fan and the pump power cable into the header labeled CPU OPT. If you couldn't figure out which was which, the CPU fan cable is the one with the sleeve. And now to apply the thermal paste. So make sure you don't do too much, but also not too little. You pretty much want to do a pea sized amount. So whatever you think would fit into the size of a pea, that's how much you want to use. So you only get one shot at this. So very slowly place the water block into place. And once you do apply a bit of pressure so that the thermal paste will evenly spread across the cold plate and then secure it in place using the thumb nuts that are equipped with the spring. You want to do it in an X pattern. So do the top left, then the bottom right, then the top right and bottom left and keep repeating the process until it is fully secured. Now guys, don't forget to screw with confidence, please. <laughs> but yeah, guys, you wanna make sure that the screws are properly secured, not to the point where it's like cracking your motherboard, but to the point where you feel confident that it's secured in place. And the final cable that we'll be using for this AIO is the USB mini. Plug one end into the cooler and the other end into one of the two USB headers on the motherboard. Now these next set of steps are only for people who got a hard drive and or an internal SSD. So if you didn't, you can just skip to the timestamp displayed on the screen. But yeah, for an internal SSD, all you really got to do is take the bracket, screw the internal SSD into place and then place it back and that's it. As for hard drives though, you're going to want to flip the NZXT H510 onto its side so that you can see the bottom of it and unscrew the hard drive bracket. And once it's out, all you gotta do is slide the hard drive into place and secure it using four to six screws. Now this bracket can hold a maximum of two hard drives. So if you have a second hard drive, all you gotta do is the same exact thing, just secure it with four to six screws and voila, you have a second hard drive. And then just secure it back into its original position and fasten it using the same four screws that you originally took out. And of course we gotta connect these storage devices to the motherboard, so go and find your SATA cables. You'll need two, connect one to your SSD and the other to your hard drive. These only go in one way. And then slide the other ends of the cables through the middle cutout of the case. Now install these SATA cables into the top two rows. Doesn't matter which, as long as you're not using the bottom two, because if you use those, your M.2 SSD becomes unusable. And last cable we gotta plug into these storage devices, the power cable. So locate your SATA power cable, which will be coming from the power supply, plug one into your hard drive and another into your internal SSD. And now let's install the third and final up here fan that we'll be using with this PC. And of course, you want to fasten them using four screws that come with the up here fans. And for the catchphrase, the part you've probably been waiting to hear about, the graphics card. Ensure that you have removed the proper PCI brackets, unlock the PCIe retention clip, and then your graphics card is ready to be installed. Slowly push it into place, apply some pressure until you hear the PCIe retention clip make a click. That'll just let you know that your graphics card has been properly placed into the PCIe slot. And then using the screw you used to remove the PCIe brackets, screw it back into where the graphics card is to secure its left side. Plug in the PCIe power cable and your PC is done. That's right, this is the final step. This PC is ready to be booted up. Okay, so now let's move on to the topic of installing Windows. So the first step is to go onto a separate computer and plug in a USB drive that has a capacity of eight gigabytes or higher so that we can download Windows 10 onto it. Then go on the Windows 10 disk image ISO file download page, which will be in my description and click download tool now. 
won't take too long, it's not a very big file. Drag it onto the desktop and then double click file. It'll take a couple seconds to load, as you can tell. Once it does load, accept the software license terms. It'll then take another little bit to load. Then select Create Installation Media and click Next. Now ensure that it is the language of your preference. You have Windows 10 selected and the architecture is 64-bit. Then click Next. Make sure USB flash drive is selected. Click Next. And then ensure it's installing onto your USB drive. Then click Next and it'll install it onto the USB flash drive. This will take a little while, so you're going to want to just let it sit for 20 to 30 minutes. So now that Windows 10 has successfully been downloaded onto the USB drive, it is time to plug it into the new PC. Now press the boot button and wait until you're greeted by this screen. When you reach this window, ensure the correct language and time format are selected, and then click Install Now. It'll then take a little bit and start setting up the process for the installation of Windows. Then click I don't have a product key. You'll be able to put in this product key later on. Then click Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro and then click Next. It'll then take another couple seconds to load. Then click I accept the license terms and click Next. Now click Install Windows Only and select the drive that you're installing Windows onto. And then let Windows install. This will take around 20 to 30 minutes. So just let your PC sit, go get yourself a nice little snack or something, watch some TV and let Windows download. Now head over to Digital Chill Mart, best place to get a Windows 10 license. I've been working with these guys for a long time, so trust me, this is a trustworthy website to get a really cheap Windows key from. Then you're going to want to get the key for whatever Windows version you've downloaded, being Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro, and then click Add to Cart and Check Out. You'll then be emailed the Windows license key after you purchase it. Once you have the activation key, click the search bar on the bottom left, type in Activation, and then click Activation Settings. Now you should see something that says activate windows right around this area. It should look like this, and that's where you're going to want to type in the key that you received from digitalchillmart.com. As for drivers, every single link to all the drivers you will need for this PC build will be in the description of this video. So be sure to check that out when you complete installation of Windows on this computer so that you can immediately install those drivers. And last, but certainly not least, the benchmarks for this computer. So for this segment of the video, there will be no commentary, just the benchmarks and some nice soothing music. So sit back, relax, and enjoy.
All right, so that will do it for this $1,000 gaming and streaming PC video. If you like the video, drop a like, have any comments or questions, drop a comment below. And if you enjoy the content that you're seeing, drop a sub, it really helps out the channel. Also, if you plan on building this or have built it, be sure to let us know in the comments. The community and I would love to hear about it. Also, I have a Discord. So if you'd like to join, the link will be in the description. All right, so that will do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Peace out.